Okay, so welcome to this next video on the, in the playlist on synaptic mechanisms. In this video, what we're going to talk about is the process by which neurotransmitter is released from uh, axon terminals. Okay, and we're not going to look at this process for any sort of specific neurotransmitter. We're going to keep it completely general. So the neurotransmitter in question could be what ever neurotransmitter that comes to mind. So noradrenaline, uh, GABA, glutamate, dopamine, uh, serotonin, whatever you want, it can be any of them. And the process is pretty much the same. So uh, the structure for this video then, what we're going to start with is we're going to start about the, with the process of filling vesicles with neurotransmitter. We're then going to talk about the process of taking these neuro, uh, sorry, taking these vesicles to the membrane and docking them, ready to fuse. We'll then talk about the action potential coming down the neuron and how that's going to trigger uh, the fusion of these uh, docked vesicles with uh, the plasma membrane to uh, release the neurotransmitter content contents into the synaptic cleft. And then what we'll talk about is the liberation of what's known as the reserve pool of vesicles. And finally, we'll then talk about uh, endocytosis of the vesicles back again and the recycling of the vesicles uh, through uh, NSF and SNAP. Now, I want to um, stress that um, a lot of what we're going to talk about in this video is still controversial. Uh, well, some of it's very, very solid, um, and the community is, will all agree on it. But there are other portions that we're going to talk about where they are theories. They are theories that have got weight behind them, but they are not uh, rock-solid fact yet. And in 10 years' time, this video may be very, very wrong, basically, is what I want to say. Uh, there will be elements that I hope will still be true, uh, but there are other bits that may well be wrong. Okay, but they, they are theories that... Uh, make sense and are nice models and in the end all science is is models for nature um, nature has a true way of doing things we're building models for that basically and this is a model that I'm going to present to you that has some uh, has weight behind it there are a lot of people who believe in it okay right uh, so uh, we're going to begin then uh, with the filling of vesicles so let's have our axon terminal here so let's draw it nice and big. So this is our axon coming along here. And then the axon ends with what we know is called an axon terminal, which will synapse onto the next cell, basically. And uh, this axon terminal, when an action potential arrives along the axon and stimulates the axon terminal, what's going to happen is the axon terminal is going to start releasing neurotransmitter. And that's what this entire video is about. How does that occur? So, what we're going to start with is how do we get neurotransmitter into vesicles? So basically what's happening is vesicles are arriving along the axon, basically. So here comes a vesicle. So vesicles are transported along the axon from the cell body, which is somewhere over there, basically. I'll draw it tinily in here. So right at the end of the axon, and this is going to look really out of proportion, but at the other end of the axon is the cell body with the dendrites on here. So here's the cell body of the neuron with these dendrites that I'm drawing here. Okay, and from the cell body, which has the nucleus over here, has come these ax oh, well, these uh, vesicles, sorry, that have come along the axon here, okay, to the um, axon terminal right at the end here. Okay, so the empty vesicles are arriving in the axon terminal from the axon. Now what we want to discuss is how are we going to fill these axon, uh, sorry, these vesicles with neurotransmitter. Well, the neurotransmitter is going to be manufactured in the axon terminal. For this, you require energy generally, so there are a lot of mitochondria in the axon terminal. So I'll draw a mitochondria in here. Okay, so you synthesize the neurotransmitter in the axon terminal, let's just denote it here as NT, and we now want to get it into the uh, vesicle, basically. So how does this occur? Well, it occurs by a process of secondary active transport. So if I draw the vesicle out bigger here. Okay, so basically in the membrane of the vesicle, 
okay? There is something known as the V-ATPA. So this is the V-ATPA, um, it's often written like this, V-ATPA, which stands for vesicular ATPA. So this is the vesicular, or sometimes vacu vacuolia, vacuola, um, saying that it's in vacuoles, but we'll call it the vesicular ATPAs, okay? And basically, what this protein does is it takes in ATP, so in comes ATP here, and it's going to hydrolyze it to ADP and inorganic phosphate. So it's going to hydrolyze ATP, and that hydrolysis of ATP will release energy, and it's going to use that energy that is liberated from the hydrolysis of ATP, it's going to use that to pump a proton from the cytoplasm, or from the, well, from the cytoplasm in this axon terminal, into the vesicle. So it's going to pump a proton into the vesicle. So what will overall happen is that you will get a very high concentration of protons within these empty vesicles. And it will be much higher, basically, than the proton concentration in, um, in the cytoplasm of the axon terminal. Okay, now what you can do is you can build um, neurotransmitter transporters. So we'll put this here. Okay, so this is a transporter basically. So here's a transporter, which is going to basically allow one proton to leave the. Occasionally it can be more than one proton, but it's going to um, allow protons to leave the uh, vesicle. So protons are going to come out effectively in exchange for pumping a neurotransmitter in. Now, if you want a specific example of a transporter, uh, then you can think about the VGAT, uh, which is uh, the uh, vesicular GABA transporter. So VGAT is an example of a transporter, which stands for the vesicular GABA transporter. So the specific neurotransmitter that VGAT transports is GABA. I think it also transports uh, glycine as well uh, in the spinal cord, uh, but it, the main one that it does in the brain, of course, is GABA. So this is going to uh, couple the movement of GABA into the, um, into the vesicle to the movement of protons out. But more generally, you can have other examples. For instance, the VMAT is a very famous example, the vesicular monoamine transporter. So I'll put that as well. VMAT is a very famous example, and um, it transports uh, neurotransmitters such as serotonin, uh, dopamine, and noradrenaline, which are all monoamines. These are vesicular monoamine transporters, and the infamous drug, reserpine, but, um, works by mono... no, this isn't right. Monamine, monoamine. Um, the infamous drug... Um, monoamine transporter. The infamous drug uh, reserpine works by stopping the activity of this VMAT, the vesicular monoamine transporter, and that's how it produces a drop in blood pressure, which is what it was originally being uh, tested for. So I'll just write this down. Reserpine blocks the actions of this monoamine transporter. Okay, and it was originally hoped that this would be a uh, good way of lowering blood pressure, basically. Uh, the problem uh, was that um, it also blocked um, the transport of dopamine, serotonin, and noradrenaline in the brain, basically. So it blocked serotonergic neurotransmission, noradrenergic transmission, and dopamine transmission in the brain. Now, serotonin and noradrenaline are extremely important in mood, in making you feel happy, basically. Dopamine is extremely important in the reward system. So blocking them makes you feel very bad, basically, and it produce, it's a horrendous um, uh, drug that produces depression, basically, and many people who were put on this drug ended up committing suicide. So it's no longer used to treat um, hypertension. Okay, um, but, I, but it is an example of an interesting pharmacological agent for uh, scientists to use to block this um, transporter. Okay, so these transporters are transporting the neurotransmitter into these uh, vesicles in exchange for moving the protons out, basically. So they're using the proton gradient that is established by this uh, VATPAs, this vesicular ATPAs, to um, transport their neurotransmitter in. So it's an example, basically, of secondary active transport. 
Okay, so conjunctive transport just means that you're using uh, the, concentra the um, concentration gradient of an ion to, um, to move your um, substance in, rather than actually coupling it to the hydrolysis of ATP. So this here, this movement of protons from the cytoplasm into the vesicle, is an example of prime reactive transport. But now we're using, we're using the, the fact that this has worked and produced this ion gradient, and now we're going to let the proton go down its ion gradient in exchange for um, moving our neurotransmitter in. So it's secondary active transport, therefore. Okay. Right, so that's how we get our neurotransmitter into the vesicle. Now, once you've got a vesicle that is full of neurotransmitters, so let's draw this vesicle and we will denote the neurotransmitter in red. So we've got this vesicle that's full of this pink neurotransmitter here. And that vesicle now full of neurotransmitter is what's known as a synaptic vesicle. So this is a synaptic vesicle. Now, basically, um, what you now need to do with this synaptic vesicle is you go, oh, whoops, it's a bit high up. Uh, what you now need to do is you need to um, get it either, well, it can go to two different stores of synaptic vesicles. So in axon terminals, basically, there are two separate stores of synaptic vesicle. There are those which are docked at the membrane, so I'll show these here. They are actually sitting right next to the membrane and are ready to be released. Now, this sort of portion of the neuron here, uh, well, the axon terminal, let me highlight it in pink. So this portion here, this is what's known as the active zone of the uh, axon terminal. So this is the active zone. So these neurotransmitters docked in the active, sorry, these uh, synaptic vesicles docked in the active zone, those are known as the releasable pool of synaptic vesicles. So this is the releasable pool of synaptic vesicles. Okay, so I will cover them in in a moment. Synaptic vesicles. And it's clear why they're called that, because if um, an action potential comes along here, these are the, these are the vesicles which you can uh, release instantly. That's why they're known as the releasable pool of synaptic vesicles. So they're all full of their neurotransmitter content, so here in red. Okay, now that's not the only store of vesicles that you have in the axon terminal, because you'd quickly run out of space basically for them. There's only a certain amount of membrane in the active zone, so you've only got a certain number of uh, synaptic vesicles that you can dock onto this uh, active zone membrane. So instead, what you end up having to do is store some in the cytoplasm of the axon terminal. Okay, so we'll make this a storage center for them over here as well. Now, these ones that aren't docked to the membrane of the active zone, but are instead stored further back uh, in the axon terminal, these are referred to as the reserve pool. Okay, so this is the reserve pool. Now, um, I will just briefly talk about how you store uh, synaptic vesicles in the reserve pool, and then we'll talk a lot about how you store them in the re releasable pool of synaptic vesicles. And by the way, the releasable pool of synaptic vesicles is sometimes even, it's got even a more uh, longer title. Sometimes it's even referred to as the readily releasable um, pool of synaptic vesicles. The reason being that this reserve pool is releasable, as we're going to see, what will happen is when you get an action potential arriving here, you will instantly release the readily releasable vesicle pool. And then what will happen is you'll start moving the re reserve pool into, um, well, they'll move towards the active zone, basically. Once these ones have all fused, then you're going to bring more in to fuse, basically, and they'll come from the reserve pool. So the reserve pool will be released uh, when an action potential comes about, potentially. Okay, so it's not as though these are the only ones that will be released. They are the ones that will be released the quickest, certainly, uh, which is why they're readily releasable. Uh, but the reserve pool can be released. Okay, so... Um, I just want to talk briefly about uh, how the reserve pool is structured. What are these uh, reserve pool synaptic vesicles actually being stored on, basically? Well, in the um, axon terminal, you have a lot of cytoskeletal proteins. And the key cytoskeletal protein that we're going to be um, 
we're going to be interested in is going to be actin. So let's say in green here, this is an actin filament. And of course, you won't just have one. It will be a meshwork. You'll have loads of them. This is the cytoskeleton. So um, it's just permeating all over the place. So you'll have loads of these actin filaments everywhere. And they are holding up the cell. They are keeping its shape, basically. OK. All right. So let me show you how a... Um, a uh, synaptic vesicle in the reserve pool is linked to the actin cytoskeleton. So if this is a piece of actin here, an actin filament, of course, because actin itself is a very globular little protein, so I will draw actin here. So actin basically is a little globular protein, and an actin filament consists of absolutely loads of these little actin monomers polymerized together to make an actin filament like this. Okay, so let me just color them in. So these are all actin monomers here, which are all joined together in this great big actin filament, or an actin polymer is another name for this actin filament. Okay, and now what we're going to do basically is we're going to link our, um, our synaptic vesicle to this uh, actin filament. So if this is our synaptic vesicle here, if the black denotes the phospholipid bilayer, and then inside we have these um, neurotransmitters. So the neurotransmitters are represented by these pink dots. Okay. Then basically what you have is a protein known as synapsin. Synapsin here. So this protein is known as a synapsin. Synapsin. Okay. And synapsin basically has one domain where it can bind to actin filaments. Okay, so it's bound to actin filaments. And then on the other side, it will bind to the phospholipid bilayer of a synaptic vesicle. So this is a synaptic vesicle here. And then we have the actin filament on the other side. So the point is that the synaptic vesicle is linked to the actin filament over here by these synapsin proteins. So that's, they're not just floating around in the cytoplasm of the axon terminal. Instead, they are actually held in place on an actin filament, which makes up this actin cytoskeleton within the, um, within the axon terminal. So they are held in position, basically. They are adjoined on to the actin cytoskeleton within the axon terminal. Okay, so we'll call it there for this video, and we'll continue our discussion in the next video.